Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Good Time Show. I am Damon Epps. Today on the show, we have Caroline Stelty, who is not just awesome, she is an incredible female entrepreneur. She's young and she's crushing life. She is a social media influencer as well, has just opened her non alcoholic wine called Foy. Let's get into the business. Um, how did you get into everything that you're doing? Yeah, so I grew up with a single mom, and she is just a badass. Like, she's just... She's a badass. Yeah, she I completely is. agree. Your mom is and a badass. And she knows what she wants, and she gets it, and she's a good manifester, and she's grateful. She's all the good things. So growing up with that, um, I think around when I was 10, uh, she got really into, like, her spirituality and... Um, manifesting and the power of the secret and just diving in on these books. And at the same time, she taught me all of that. And so growing up, like manifesting and like knowing how to do that, I was doing that at 10. And like, that's a new thing now. I feel like it's a trend, which I'm so glad that people know about it. But I've just always been doing it. And that being said, I grew up also in a wedding venue. So not a normal childhood. I mean, it was normal, but like, also not normal, like normal for me. Um, and that being said, my mom told me, she was like, we need content for this house. Like we need someone to take photos. And I'm like, oh, I can do it. And I was like 14, 15. And so I became like the in-house photographer for our home. Um, and so we would have weddings. We have, we would have two weddings every month of my childhood and just parties, ragers, big weddings, small weddings. And so I would follow around photographers and shoot content and be like, I live here. Um, I'm just going to be shadowing you. And that changed my life. Like just being around creatives and learning from professional photographers. Um, that's what I got into. So that's the first thing that my first job, I'm not my first job, second job, uh, first job, I was swim coach at age 12, but yeah, no, you're an like, incredible swimmer. Your yeah, whole family is an incredible swimmer. swimmer. Um, and so that was like my first, like, full-time job, like self entrepreneur. And, uh, that being said, so I shot weddings and seniors, uh, for eight years. I just shot my last wedding in December of 2023. I'm done. Um, great career, just not what I always wanted to do. Um, met a lot of amazing people along the way, um, learned a lot, traveled all over the country shooting weddings. Um, but, yeah, so got into that, and then COVID hit. Obviously, no weddings were happening. And so my friend Joe and myself were like, let's get on TikTok. Like, this is fun. So we both got on TikTok. Joe um, is a huge influencer now. And Give me the names of the podcast. Give me the names of the So things. Joe Johnson is my podcast host and friend, good friend. And um, yeah, so we got on, and my podcast is Middle Ground Podcast. There we go. Um and so we got on TikTok, and then that summer we launched our podcast, Middle Ground, um, and it just blew up. We were just like, wow, people are struggling. People need to listen. I was even struggling doing it. I, you know, we just authentic. Give me, tell, the tell the audience, uh, you know, what the, because I know what it is, but it's Middle Ground. Is, yeah, it, so Middle Ground is directed towards females that are struggling or just wanting to live the life of their dreams. And so we encourage women to go after what the fire is in them and make their dreams happen. Whatever that may be, being a mom, being an amazing wife, being this badass entrepreneur. Um, we have a couple guests on every so often and it comes out every Monday. So middle ground Monday. Um, so yeah, I started posting on TikTok and then middle ground. Um, and again, just love, I love the creativity. I've always wanted to be like quote unquote free, like do my own thing. I don't like being told what to do never wanted a boss. Um, I've had three boss figures in my life. One being my mom, one being Joe, cause I, we did weddings together, mm -hmm. Joe and I, and then my swim teacher, uh, when I did swim lessons and they all were like, you're a horrible employee. You're horrible. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, I don't want to do this anyway. I don't want to work for anyone. So I just always have been driven to just do my own thing. Like always been driven by that. So yeah, and so that leads me to where I am today of creating foy and non-alcoholic wine. Um, Hold on, I gotta, I gotta get into this. Okay. 
I have, I, I'm a, I'm a go-getter. I, I kind of go for things. Um, but I always have like self-doubt. I, I am, I, I'm, I'm learning. I think it comes with my generation too, of like that. We just kind of, we always are kind of pessimists and we, it's kind of like the self-deprecation. Yeah, it's like, and it kind of like, yeah, all the imposter syndrome too, of all of that. I do believe in manifestation and all of that. Um, and I, I am now a forward thinker and all of that, but how, what do you do to manifest? I think manifest, you know, it's like manifesting. It's like, so how do you do it right now? It's like, cause I'm opening a full fledged production company now right. after producing television for 20 years and how he's had my own production company, but now I'm doing a production company in Bentonville, which is much different than yeah, owning a production company where in Hollywood where, you know, and now it's a different beast. We're doing different things. Um, but what is you, what, what, what are the steps that you go through to start um, manifesting? You know, it's interesting. Cause I think, I get asked this a lot actually in my personal life and on the podcast and it's hard for me to answer because I don't think like the way I do it it's meant for everyone but I would say since I grew up swimming and since a young age like I started when I was six swam all my life almost swam in college like big swimmer starting from there like my coaches were big into visualization like I would visualize like getting the time I would get and I would swim it and get that time. Like that's just how it always happened for me. And so I'm again, a creative person. I just see things in my head and I am just really good at, like I know a lot of people write stuff down, write their goals down. I'm a big vision board girly. And so at the beginning of 2023, I made this like massive vision board and 98% of it came true. And I'm like, that's never happened to me in my whole life. And I'm like, that's so crazy. And even I think it's crazy. But I think that my personality, of course, sometimes I have self-doubt and imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Of course. But and kickbacks. And exactly. But I don't have it as strong as the people around me. I've noticed. Like, I am very confident in who I am. And I really strive to always um, learn new things, learn from others. Um, and I think also a part of manifestation is your reference group so who you're hanging out with who who is like putting words into your head like mm -hmm. any self-doubt from others I've noticed like that wears on you fully 100% and so the people I'm around and especially the past two years the people I've chosen to be around they're not self-doubt people they're like no no do it you got it do this and so having a reference group that's just key to like and it, again life ebbs and flows there's going to be people even if you think that are rock stars that are going to be down in the dumps and don't just ditch them of course but just really honing in on like who you're hanging out with the energy of people it literally will change your life yeah i uh um it's funny i guess before i even knew what manifestation was i think that you know i was you know, I moved to Hollywood and I was like, oh, I'm going to do whatever we're going to do. Um, but I remember specific things when I was doing stand up. I remember going, well, I'm going to perform at every stage mm -hmm. in in Hollywood, you know. So it was the comedy store, you know, the Laugh Factory, yeah. um, uh, the improv. Uh, and one day I just did it. Like it, one day it happened and I look back and I was like, wow, I said I was going to do that. I remember going, you know, even I was like, I, this year I'm going to get an age, you know, it was like within, a, but you know, I was, I didn't ever say this year. I was always kind of like, okay, my next step right. is I'm going to get, um, you know, I become a reality TV producer. Then I was like, you know, I, I want to have an agent or, and all of a sudden within a two years, all of a sudden I had an agent. And then, yeah. and then I remember going, my goal is to sell a TV show. And then I worked my butt off to like kind of pitching shows and all the kinds. Of, next thing you know, I sold, I sold a TV show. Yeah, all of were awesome. monumental for you know. It's funny when you start doing things. I was just a guy from Dallas, you know, know, like yeah. just no nobody, you know. I I had nothing, and you just got there and you're scrappy and whatever, and then just happened to be right place, right time, and things just kind of if you if you if it's just in the back, I I'm a very visualized person, mm -hmm. visual person. Um, so I could see myself doing those things and kind of everything kind of has started to happen. Like I remember moving here. I just, I, I saw, I was like, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. And now my life is kind of, I was like, oh, I'm going to open a production yeah, company now. It's all sure. kind of happening now. Yeah, And I think part of manifestation too, like a lot of people don't like that word or they seem it, they see it as like woo woo and all this stuff. 
And it's just that. It's just you. It's not a magic wand. You still have to work hard. Yeah. I work my ass yeah. off. And bad things happen in your life yes. that yeah. it's just it's like, oh, just well, uh, you, you know, you, 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 yeah, it doesn't yeah, happen. But it's, and it may be 10 years instead of the two years exactly, or yeah. oh, I did a vision board and it all came true in a year. <laughs> like, that's not the, no, that's not that's the, not that's happen every yeah. single year. Um, but yeah, it's just, it might for you actually, yeah, I gotta be honest with you. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's also the gratitude of just little things like being grateful. You have a warm shower. A lot of people don't have warm showers, you know, getting coffee in the morning, little things like that. That's also putting good energy out and for you to get it back. I truly believe in that. So be kind, be genuine to people and people will help you. I believe in energy more than anything in the world. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why I do this podcast. I say it all the time. Connecting with people and the energy that you receive and the energy you give back affects everything. Yeah. When I do a show, it's all about producing energy. If I go into a show and I want everybody in the room to be mad, I just go in the room and be a jerk. Or yeah. like, you know, if I want everyone in the room to be happy, truly be happy and mm -hmm. like, you know, create that energy within you and it will rub off and everybody in the room will be like, oh, yeah. wow, I'm well, more happy. Well, I think happy. that's also your superpower. Like you're very good at wearing your heart on your sleeve. Like I am very not, good. Yeah. I'm not that good. I'm very. It's my gift or my curse. Yeah. Because I true. can't control it. Mine's the opposite. Like I'm very um, walls <laughs> up until they're broken down kind of person. I've always been like that. Like even growing up, I remember in, I think I was in the seventh grade someone, this girl sitting next to me in art class was like, you know, you're just kind of better than everyone. Like, you're just so intimidating. You're better than everyone. And I'm like, I'm in seventh grade. I don't know what, I'm just like living life. <laughs> like I'm a kid. Yeah. I'm like, what are you um, talking about? Would, but would... it's so interesting because over... Speaking of that, give me my crayon. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> okay. And so again, it's a gift and a curse because I can command a room because people do listen to me, but then... I have to find the balance of like, I'm trying to work on this, that this year actually, of like letting my guard down, like it's okay. I can, I'm a human, I make mistakes. Um, but anyways, that's a whole nother ball game. Yeah, um, speaking of you and being powerful, I've always been impressed by your mom and we became friends and you know, I was all, you know, I've been picking your brain um, about social media influencing and all of that and all the things you were doing. But this Foy thing has been probably the most impressive thing of any, if anybody on any age starting a company as an Thank entrepreneur, you. I mean, you, it was a random day and you go, Oh, I, yeah, I'm going to start this uh, non-alcoholic wine company. I go, cool. It was two weeks later, or I mean, I might be rushing it, but no, it was like two weeks. It was like two weeks later. You're like, yeah, we we found a wine person. I don't know. I felt like your mom had met some wine person. You gave them a call. They were like, oh, we can do it. Then you had um, a meeting. I know it was the Walmart people, but it happened to be during like Inferno or whatever they call this. One of those. Uh, what is it? I don't, I don't know. know. No, I, I felt like that there was something going on. And uh, it was like the pitch session where everybody uh, ignite. It what? wasn't that. I it wasn't ignite. That. You didn't ignite. No, okay. No, no. So. Uh, but something like I just know that you had an immediate like you just had you just all, all the, the stars aligned all the stars aligned yeah. you hit the ground running it was less than a month and you had a wine company that was happening yeah and you were getting it just I mean you, it's crazy how quickly you went into and now you're a now you're a wine yeah now it's like my job now yeah. you're now you're in the wine business yeah, now I'm in the wine and business. it's not even been a year no mm -mm. yeah just so you guys know <laughs> she thought of it, created it, um, has, is doing it. <laughs> is doing it. It is now made, it is in bottles. It is sitting in boxes at low loft. Also a friend Plan. of ours, um, and being distributed. And you started this how many months ago? So the first thought popped in my head in March and we, are we bought the grape? I bought the grapes in July of 2023. And crazy. It, it got bottled December 1st of 2023. Crazy. Mm. It's really crazy. It is really crazy. But you know, when you live your life, it's like, oh, it's not that crazy. No, no, it's crazy. It's like, crazy. When people remind me, I'm like, that was crazy. That it's was crazy. a crazy year. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's not even it's a year. Crazy. It's not even a year. Yeah. It's not even a year. It's just started. Um, yeah. 
Okay, talk to me about wine is cool. Like wine is cool. Like I, it's funny, I started drinking wine again. I'm non-alcoholic, it's, it is alcoholic, <laughs> I did. I am gonna buy some of your bottles Vintage. for sure, but I for sure drank some wine last night. I kind of stopped drinking wine. I started drinking wine when I moved to Bentonville for some weird reason. I, hmm. I was a huge wino. Yeah. Then I got here and I just started drinking whiskey and I don't know why, but um, I drank some wine last night. I'm gonna let you get into the whole pitch of the non-alcoholic, because the non-alcoholic, scene is such a growing world that yeah. i've been fascinated by the mocktail world and you know i it's yeah it's crazy how the mocktail world and then this non-alcoholic world um but wine in general is one of the coolest things alive because wine is truly it's a it's a community kind of thing you yeah, know like when sure. i went to italy and i met these family members that made it in their basement and it's such a it's such a you put it on the thing, you put it on the counter, everybody sits there and drinks it. There's not like, oh, we're making a cube of ice and it, you just pour it in a exactly. glass and you hand it and you just talk over life. And wine just has that ability. I don't know what it is, but it is just a, a community kind of thing. I totally agree. I mean, agree. Jesus drinks it. <laughs> uh, tell me like why you wanted to make a non-alcoholic wine. Yeah, so long story short, I if I look... So I'm 24. I just turned 24. So I haven't been like drinking that long. Um, but after high school, I decided to move to Italy. Um, I was going to swim in college. I was going to do that. And I was ju just life events that happened personally and in my family. I was just burnt out. I was like, I'm done. And so my mom sat me down and she was like, do you need a break? Like, do you do you because I was going to swim for University of Hawaii. Like I'm part Hawaiian. That's what I was going to do. And she was like, do you need a break? And I just started crying. I'm like bawling. I wasn't filling out any of my applications, nothing. And she's like, okay, like, it's okay. This is your life. You can do whatever you want. And that's like, again, what a great mom. Amazing. And so she was like, we'll figure this out. And so um, when I was 15 years old, we had an exchange student, Ricardo, and he lived us, with us for the summer. He was from Milan, Italy, and loved Ricardo, like love him to death. And so my mom's like, do you want to go live with Ricardo? Like random. And I'm, I haven't seen the kid in like three, four years. And I'm like, actually, yeah, that would be awesome. Like how cool. I, I'll never be 18 again. I'll, I don't have responsibilities. Like I can just go live. I can figure it out. So long story short, moved to Italy, lived there for a year, um, did photography, soul search, taught English, like crazy stuff happened. And it changed my life. Like literally it changed my life and like you were saying with wine I learned how their culture acted around alcohol in general they don't drink to get drunk they drink for a specific reason it's paired with food it's like they're so passionate about it so that rubbed off on me mm -hmm. so when I moved back I adopted that lifestyle so I it's fell so into great. this it, like really. sober curious kind of lifestyle of I de never fell into peer pressure. Like if someone's drinking, like, oh, Caroline, drink. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Like I did never drink to get drunk. Like I was always like that. And fast forward to January 1st of 2023, I did the 75 hard challenge. So, Oh my God, that's so intense. If you're not familiar, it's, you have to work out twice a day. So one has to be outside 45 minutes each, um, drink a gallon of water, no drinking, no alcohol, uh, follow a strict diet and read 10 pages of a book. And so I was like, I'm going to do that on a whim. Like this was like, I think two days before January 1st, I decided to do this. So I did it. It literally changed my whole life doing this challenge. I finished it March 16th. Um, but during the challenge, I, and again, I wasn't this big drinker before. So the no alcohol part was fine for me, but it made me realize how little, non-alcoholic wine there is on the market that's good because I drank it all and I'm like what the heck is going on like there's not a good one it's all sugar and I'm not a soda person I'm always grab a sparkling water so I'm like why would I even drink this like sugary non-alcoholic wine like this what is this so finish the challenge March 16th the that same week I had a phone call with my now winemaker Drew like was on the, I don't even know the right word, like just accelerated to the max 
on the phone with Drew. Drew was like, yes, we're, I want to do this. I've never done a non alcoholic wine. Um, let's do it. Flew out to meet him the next week. And Flew where? To Northern California. April 1st, met Drew, amazing guy, third generation winemaker, amazing. Like, I could not ask for a better winemaker. Um, and that week we were there, uh, he set up all these meetings. Like, we, we toured the bottle facility, we toured the Dioc facility, we saw corks, we did the whole thing. I'm like, oh, I guess we're doing this. Like, no one's saying we're not. Like, I was just like, I describe it as my foot was on the gas pedal the whole time. Like, it's still on the gas pedal. So then we left him. Then I got to work of like, okay, how are we going to, how am I going to pull this off? Um, and, you know, it's just gone so fast. And like I said, in July, we bought the grapes. Um, they went in barrels in July. They aged for five months. So it's a, in five months, 100% uh, French oak barrels. Drew did his magic, judged it up. In August, we flew back out to Northern California to taste the final product um, and so when it gets de alked it goes through a process called spinning cone method. So we actually, you know, age it just like traditional wine. So that's the other thing. It's not grape juice. A lot of people are like, oh, it's just grape juice. It's just, it's not, there's nothing about this. So that's grape juice. Um, so after the five months of aging, we take it out and we put it through a spinning cone method. So it actually just spins and I don't know. The correct terminology, but it just takes spinning it out. comb. Spinning we can just comb. we can live with spinning that. Comb. It's fine. Um, takes it out. So then on bottling day, we actually add back clean ingredients to build up that flavor of wine you know and love. So my goal in making this was to make it the most wine like taste on the market with clean ingredients and the lowest calories. And he Drew knocked it out of the park. Like compl I'm just shocked. I'm still like bowing down to Drew every day. Um, because it has 30 calories in the whole entire bottle. Whole bottle? Whole bottle. Oh, my gosh. Um, so it's 15, like a Tic Tac. Yeah, literally. Uh, one gram of sugar in the whole entire bottle. Um, natural flavors added back in. All clean. And, yeah, like I said, it got bottled on December 1st. Um, it got trucked to our warehouse, uh, I don't know, that same week. And we've just been shipping it out like crazy. Like, it's been... A whirlwind, I still can't believe it. Like, I can and I can't because, again, through the whole year, I always visualized it on a shelf. I'm like, this is, I'm going to see it. I'm going to drink it at places that I know and love. And it's, like, happened. Like, it's at a local restaurant, Conifer, that I absolutely adore. Oh, that's great. And so going there and, like, ordering my product, it's so surreal. But I'm like, I've been here before. Like, I, I've already visualized drinking this, weirdly enough. It's so weird. But it's so strange. Yeah, in a roundabout way, that's the story of Foy. That's so cool that you, yeah, owning any kind of wine and then also jumping in in the world of it's. Yeah, it's 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 crazy too because like you know we've flown out to Northern California I think three times. It's in Healdsburg, California. Yeah, the like cutest place right. on planet Earth. Don't tell a lot of people about it because it's kind of hush hush, but it's like Benville. It's very charming. Um, wine wineries gorgeous. Go in the fall if you're planning to go, but it's so crazy. Like flying out there, I'm like, I'm like, I like this is my job. Like I'm going on a work trip in vineyards, frolicking around. Like, what is life? Like, what is life? And like, it's mine. Like, this is my product. It's crazy. It's crazy. really crazy. It's really cool. Thank you. Um, right here in Bentonville, which. That doesn't shock me. There's so many people doing such cool stuff in this town. Um, wow, I didn't know you had it at Conifer already. Yeah, it's at Conifer. Um, we just signed with Meteor, so that they'll be carrying it soon. Um, and other people, other places. That's really things. great. Yeah. I still haven't had it. We should have been. We should have drank a bottle. We should drink it. We should, I don't yeah, know why the hell we didn't drink. Well, we should have drank a bottle. <laughs> I don't know what we were thinking about that. Um, then I could have. I could have gotten. Uh, yeah, that would have been good. Then I could have drank a whiskey on the side. No, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, what's next for Foy? Like, what do you? What, what's like the next step with like? Yeah. So um, again, I had all my goals, and one of my biggest goals is to make it the most accessible because, you know, living in Arkansas, I'm from Arkansas. You know, we just get things last. 
you know, like that is true. New York, California, like all my family's from California. So like and it's I'm, right in the middle of the country. It's got to make, it's got to make its way all the way across its way and the trends you know. and everything. So for me personally doing the challenge, I still don't drink, um, continue to not drink the whole year. And I'm doing the challenge right now. 75 hard again. You are yeah. 75 or 45? 75. I want to do the 35 hard. Days. I'm going to do the 35 hard. You can hard. do the 75 soft. I'll do the, what's the 75 soft? It's it's the same thing. You just get hammered every three days? I don't know. <laughs> it's the same thing, but I think. You read three days? You read three Yeah, it's, everything's in half. So oh. like one workout. Oh, I, I like think it. you can have cheat days for like oh, meals. Sounds great already. Like two, I don't know. All right. You can just make it up. One drunk day. Yeah. Read a newspaper article. Um, <laughs> read your phone. Read your read, Instagram read, captions. Read, 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 read Instagram captions. Oh, oh my God. I just, uh, <laughs> what's Taurus doing today on a Tuesday? <laughs> exactly. Um, so um, doing the 75 hard, you know, like I said, I was reaching for something other than sparkling water. I can drink sparkling water all day. I love it. But it's like, I want something else. Well, Arkansas, we don't have anything else. It's like. The local restaurants do do a good job, I think, of like trying new things mm -hmm. and adding co mocktails to their, you know, I've tried them all. I've tried them all. There's nothing I could grab at the shelves that was good, like a non-alcoholic wine. And again, I wanted that community factor. I wanted to bring something to a party that felt this like the same ritual I knew and love about wine. It didn't exist. It doesn't exist. And so, especially in Arkansas. So that being said, um, the future of Foy, I want it to make it the most accessible. I want it to be huge. I want it to be a name brand. Same with my wine maker. We're just shooting for the moon. We're like, the foot has is still on the gas pedal. It's nowhere, there's not even a brake pedal near us. Like we're just going full force. Um, and we have a lot of great people behind us that are excited and want to help us. And so, um, 2024, 20, we're hoping for another variety in the mix. So right now we just have a Chardonnay, so Chardonnay grapes. Um, and 2024, we're thinking rosé. Spoiler. Okay, R rosé. Huh? Yeah, sparkling rosé. So is it have, harder to do a red wine? Way harder. Oh really? Way harder. Why is that? So you know, I at first I was like, we're doing a red. Like I love red wine. I've always loved red wine in Italy. That's all I drink. And when I went to a couple of meetings and um, I was like, listen, buddies, why is this so hard? Why is there no good non-alcoholic red? Like, I want to do that. They're like, pump the brakes. I wouldn't start with a red. This is why. So they got, they had two bottles of Drew's wine that was de -alk. They just like de it for us so we could taste it. Um, his family wine. He has a family winery uh, or wine called Palmieri. So they de both of those and he flipped the red wine upside down, like took the neck, flipped the bottle upside down and sediment and gunk is just everywhere. Like it looked like you're not going to drink that. It was like horrible. And he said, it's just so much harder to do it and to pull it off and to pull it off. You have to add back so much shit and, you know, bad stuff and juices and all this stuff. Like do not start with the red. So I was highly advised not to start with the red, even though I was leaning towards that. Like, no worries. You're like, is it harder? Okay, let's do that. Exactly, yeah. That's your nature, yeah. for sure. And so, um, you know, red is, that is our goal, is to make the best red we can make in the future. Um, but we have been getting feedback of, like, what people are wanting. And rosé is just the thing, a sparkling rosé. I'm like, okay. People love this. a pink wine. Yeah. And it's fun, like, and it will pop just like traditional wine. It's it looks oh super and fun, tastes just like wine. And so I told Drew the other day, I'm like, the people are asking for a rosé, and he's like, we can do it, we can do it. And he's so Drew is just so amazing and casual and like very laid back and just I love him. He's very humble. Um, but yeah, he's like, yeah, we can make it happen. No worries. I'm going to make you do the sales pitch um, that you said to me. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna brutalize it so you can just fix it. A piece that you, um, have, what did you say? You said something like, I want people to remember what they did. Like, oh, yeah, wine yeah. is for socializing, but I want you, want, yeah. Yeah, whatever, you just say it. So, um, yeah, a goal in it was to, like, FOI, our whole motto is, FOI is about being balanced. And we believe at Foy that a balanced lifestyle is a happy one. Um, and so I think a lot of people might 
you know, be like, oh, non alcoholic wine. Like, that's not for me. I'm not sober. I don't have a problem with alcohol. That's not the point of FOI. You know, a lot of people don't drink for numerous different reasons. And so FOI is for you to sip and enjoy on Tuesday because you have a huge meeting or interview the next morning. You don't want to feel hungover, but you want to have the same ritual you know and love, just minus the alcohol. That's all what FOI is about. Um, and again, just balance. Lifestyle is a happy one. It's for sober people. It's for sober curious. It's for the, anyone that chooses not to drink for whatever the occasion may be. No judgment. Sober curious. What does it even mean? So sober curious is, um, now I'm blanking, but it's you choose when you drink. Like you're intentional about drinking. So you um, can say no if someone, if you're like peer pressuring me, I can be like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't, I'm not doing that. Like it's just like being open to being yeah. sober. Mm-hmm. And not like fully sober, like it's a balance. Like people who are sober curious, like have a pretty balanced life. I think more people are sober curious than they even think they are. It's Got a it. tor- term in the mix of I things. I love the terms. But just um, yeah, like it's funny because I post on TikTok and I've been posting FOI on TikTok, of course. What's your what's your Insta- what's your TikTok handle? Is that what you call them? Handles? Yeah, so my personal is Caroline Stelty, just my name, S-T-E-L-T-E. And then FOI is Drink FOI. Okay. Um, and I go live on FOI's account, though, pretty much every day. And just like educating people because it's so new. This industry is so new and booming. That's why also the foot's on the gas pedal because we're like, okay, we got to giddy up. Like the stars are aligning. I'm not going to miss this opportunity. Um, Anyway, so I go live a lot on TikTok and people are like, oh, it's just grape juice. Like, what are you talking about? And then when I explain it, they're like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even know that was a thing. And then I'm like, I use the term sober curious and people are like, Another term? Like, what even I is know, these that? terms. I never know how many terms yeah, we have in there's life. There's a but lot. It's but, um, yeah, it's fun. But the thing about, so, FOI is a dealkalized Chardonnay. So, like, that's the correct formal term by the FDA and everything. So, that means it had alcohol before, right? It was in barrels. It had alcohol. It's not grape juice. And so, when it gets dealked, it's left with 0.5% or less alcohol. Like we legally have to put that on our bottles, even though like I could drink a whole bottle and you're not getting it drunk. Like you can drive, it's going to be fine. Um, but legally you have to put that because it did have alcohol in its first life. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the interesting thing too. It's like, it's like kombucha, like kombucha, it's fermentates. It does all of that stuff. It's the same. Um, but yeah, the industry is just so new and I'm curious to see how it ebbs and flows because like, um, on TikTok, we open TikTok shop. And so we sell on TikTok shop, but TikTok flags it all the time. They're like, you can't sell alcohol on TikTok. I'm like, listen, it's not alcohol. Cause we don't pay alcohol tax. Like it's like shipping a t-shirt across the country. We can ship it. There's no rules and regulations. Um, so I'm interested to see how you know, as it becomes more popular and popular, like what the rules and regulations actually So it's, it's, are you allowed to still promote it on TikTok now or? Um, so yeah, it, it gets flagged every so often and then I appeal it, it, it gets approved immediately. Oh, okay, cool. But that's the annoying thing. It just keeps getting flagged and I'm like, bro. And it, you know, it's just like a it's just algorithm. Yeah. yeah, it's algorithm. Yeah. It just so, line, so yeah, it always gets flagged. And so every time I appeal it, like, 24 hours it gets put back up but anyways it's just crazy i'm just learning every day about all of it do you have any other business adventures you're going to get into or are you just sticking with this one for I'm right sticking now for, with foy for right now but it's got my wheels turning like i i i just see like this being a big thing hopefully um and just by the momentum and people that are my cheerleader in my corner they're like wow this is this is going to be huge and, you know, Drew and I got interviewed the other day for the Press Democrat in California. And even her interviewing us, she was like, I'm so proud of you guys. I'm like, Thank yeah, you. it is. It's impressive. But I don't it's w- so weird because. Of course, I'm proud of myself, but I'm like, no, 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 like the sky's the limit, like we have all this work to do, like, let's go. But I need to work on that I, as a person of like, no, no, this is massive. This is this happened way too like. It's crazy. So 
anyways, I, with that being said, as like doing this whole project, I'm trying to think of things that I could invent other things like to make our life easier with this whole process. For instance, the whole process of this, um, the hardest has been logistics to get my little head to wrap around. I don't know why, but I'm like, how am I going to get it here? How am I going to get it to people's houses? How am I going to get it to not break? Like that has been the hardest thing for my head to wrap around. And everyone's like, it's fine. Like it just ships on a truck. Like it's easy. I'm like, how though? How is it easy? Yeah. Like, how does it? Anyways, it's been fine. And of course I've learned a lot, but I'm trying to think of things that could make that process easier or, you know, another ven a business venture to go down in that respect. But just for, for now, I'm just going to not let my foot off the gas pedal for, a, I think, a while. What would you say to anybody that wanted to start a company or start a business? Um, do it. Like, it's not, it's not as hard as you think. And that's what I found with Foy is like, of course it is hard. And there are challenges and there are days I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to do this. But if you have an idea, it's almost like, it's like that Goodwill hunting movie. Have you seen that? Mm -hmm. And he's like talking and he's like, you're not going to show the world what you have. Like that's a disgrace for the world to not see your talents. Like you're just going to, oh, cause you're, you're too scared or you have imposter syndrome. Like, no, you have all these people. And that's with Foy. I have all these people that are wanting the same things that I wanted a wine, like taste something that they can drink on Tuesday. You know, they don't drink, but they want to feel included. They want to have the same ritual, all of these cases. And that would be selfish of me to not share with the world. It really would. And so I tell that to anyone that is trying to, you know, start a new thing or has an idea. I'm like, do it. Like, what are you waiting for? You have all these people you could help and whatever your category may be, a therapist uh, like you, uh, helping people, uh, this podcast, like this, it's a disgrace to just let your talents just wither away. And it's hard. It is. And you have to really work yourself up to like, you know, say things and like be in a room and command a room and be like, yeah, I'm doing this. Yep. I'm doing this. And you have to, again, find that reference group that is just your cheerleader. And it's just like, go for it. Shoot for the moon. That's my biggest piece of advice. You kind of touched on it. You know, I, I, I'm from LA and, or I'm from Texas, but I moved to Hollywood to try to be something. And I've always had a ability of connecting with people and wanting to tell their stories. And the only reason why I'm doing this is tell their stories. And kind of like you said, Doing a podcast is not easy. Yeah. It's, it's not easy. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. No one's really paying me. <laughs> like it's, right. it's not, it's kind of a free thing. Now that is, you know, helping me learn the podcast business and learning all this stuff. Now I can produce podcasts for other people. And so, you know, your dreams are, um, but this town has inspired me in ways that no other place I think could. And a lot of that is the encouragement of others. Yeah. Um, and I think coming from a place like LA where you have access to anything in the world, but the access is limited because the people are guarded. And a town like this where, I mean, especially with like Tom and Stewart and all these guys that are changing the world that have kind of, they're out there helping people and giving people access to a world. And But everybody in this town really gives you, if you ask for it, they will try to help you with yeah. nothing in return. No, I totally agree with that. And it's funny because, so my whole family's from California. Like everyone's born there except me. I was born here in Arkansas. And I always got made fun of with my family. Like, oh, the Arky, yeah. like you're the Arky. So I was so embarrassed, like telling people I'm actually born here. Like yeah. even at school. Look, and I'm still, I still get it. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah like, I mean, it's, it's like, Arkansas. you're from Arkansas. I was raised in Fayetteville and, you know, I think, so backtrack to my awesome mom. Yep. She has always been an entrepreneur. So uh, when, before I was even born, she was selling product and shipping all over the country from California. And I don't even, I think she saw a newspaper article because the internet wasn't a thing that said Fayetteville, Arkansas was a number, I think it was one or three place to live. And she took a whim and moved my, fam my brothers to Arkansas. 
And people were like, what the hell are you doing? I think it was like 1990 something. And you're crazy. What are you doing? And she's like, what's the worst that can happen? And she would always tell people death. Like, I'm going to die. Even if you die, you're just dead. Like, it's going to be fine. I can move back. Like, chill out. Anyway, she moved here, shipped, and then it worked out because she shipped her product from Arkansas, centrally located place. And so I was raised in Fayetteville with this badass mom. And it's funny because looking, like, in the moment, I'm like, why'd she move us here? Like, I could be a surfer. I could live in California. Like, I was so mad. And I kind of pent it up that energy up until I was like 18 years old. I'm like, I'm getting out of this town. I'm never coming back to Arkansas. Like never. So then when I left to go to Italy, it was perfect. Like, of course it, I learned a lot. Um, but when I came back, I moved back to Fayetteville, hated it. I was like this, cause I'd never went to college. I never, I'm not a woo pig suey girl. Like love them. I love that for other people, but I just, that's Such just the not me. Jam. <laughs> yeah, it is weird, but that's just not me. And so it was very hard for me to move back. Like I had extreme reverse culture shock, like to the max. And I'm like, I don't fit in anywhere. You know, I was just, I jumped straight into the workforce. So I didn't really have a lot of friends. A lot of my friends, you know, were in sororities, were in college. Like the, I was just the weird kid that was like trying to figure it out, um, doing my own thing. So my mom, uh, she, you know, is influential. She has a lot of people that are cheerleaders in her corner. And one of her cheerleaders in her corner was like, you should move to Bentonville. And my mom's like, why would I move to Bentonville? Like, what are you talking about? And this is like 2018, 2019. And because also growing up in Fayetteville, Bentonville is a rival. Like we're like F Bentonville. It is hysterical. It's, it's hysterical. Two, it's two small little towns, and they're like, uh, like eh. so, "What was it?" Somebody uh, said this. They they're like, "Oh, you live in Bentonville? It's so snobby." I'm like, "There's fifty thousand people here, Literally. and it is not. I mean, look, Everyone sure, says, there's a bunch of really wealthy people here, but everybody's not. It, I, I don't understand. It's not Hollywood. It's, it's not." not. There's not these. That's two, the it's thing two. I don't sw- get. Like, like it's not even Colin, L.A. County. No. Like the whole this whole Northwest Arkansas is not even L.A. Yeah. County. And calling, yeah, I. It's just one says place. That. Like Bentonville, so snobby. Anyways, so my mom, even though she's not from Arkansas, she felt that because like Bentonville's not, but I am. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, Damon is. Damon makes. It I'm a little. I'm a little thinking. Uh, no, you're it? not. I'm kidding. Um, but, anyways, she bought a house downtown in Benville and took a whim. And so I was like, okay, well, I don't know where to live. Like, I guess I'll move to Benville too, be close to my mom. And so I moved into an apartment downtown as well, Benville and in 2019. And it has changed my life. Like moving to Bentonville, like you were saying, it is, I have never, I've traveled all over the world. And I have the traveled a lot travel and meet people it and is the there greatest, is nothing like it. It is the town. greatest place. It's the ever. greatest place. It's the greatest place. There's cheerleaders. Again, like you said, there's people that want to help you. If they're in your corner, they're helping. Um, being a member at Blake Street, I I was a member the first day it opened. This place, Blake Street, has changed my life. Like, honestly, so back to Foy, the reason Foy is even a thing is because there's a member at Blake Street. His name's Peter. Peter Ferguson, shout out to you. What a Peter Ferguson. Huh? What a Peter Ferguson. <laughs> and he, um, also the pool, like swimming in this pool in the hot tub. Yeah. If you just, like, the well, people she, I have met, I think I even met you in the hot you tub. Be, you met me in the hot tub, and um, I just want everyone to know, I went swimming today when it was snowing. I saw your and story. That was, I'm very proud of you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. I didn't do that many laps, but I did enough. Yeah, you did something. I did something. Yeah. Um, but meeting people in the pool, like the pool, the water, also water is like a good energy source. Like mm-hmm. the people I've met in the pool, cha- like literally life changing people. Um, anyway, so Peter, my mom was swimming one day. And this was like, again, back to my timeline. This was like March of 2023. My mom was swimming one day and Peter was in the pool. 
and had never met Peter, didn't know who he was. My mom's a talker, so she's like, oh, who are you? What do you do? Tell me all about you. She has brought and, me and her together. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, she's talking. Nobody's listening. Talking. We talk, boy. Um, and so Peter was like, oh, I help people with ventures. And my mom, without skipping a beat, was like, oh, my, my daughter has a venture. It was a thought. I didn't even have it on paper. Like, I didn't even have a name for my business. Actually, I think I did have a name. Let's say your mom. And so she was like, uh, uh, you know, my daughter has a venture. And she was like, he's like, oh, what is it? And my mom told him. And he was like, I would love to meet with her. And the next day, or so my mom comes back, calls me on the phone. and was like, I need you to make a presentation because this guy wants to talk to you. I had nothing. So I made a presentation in like three hours. And... Then I presented to him and two other business, uh, his colleagues, and they said I crushed it. They were so complimentary of me. They were like, you own that. I had made it. Like, I didn't even, like, practice this thing. It was that fast. I made it, like, sitting at the ledger, like, cramming it out, putting all these facts together, like, pulling all this data, and I just crushed it. And that's the other thing. It's like... I think a lot of people wait until they're quote unquote ready. You're not. No one's ever ready. I wasn't ready to do that. And then telling me I crushed it literally like Peter instilled this confidence in me that I did not know I had. Like obviously I had it because I crushed that. But he was like, you, you're going to go far with this. You should do this. We pulled all this data like you need to do this. And so I'm like, OK, I guess I'm doing this. And that's just this town we live in. Like it's crazy of the amount of knowledge a the access to the people that need you need to get to is immediate 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 that does not exist anywhere or the helpful like the helpfulness and willingness to just be like hey yeah yeah this is a good idea instead of being snotty like peter could have been like oh i should do this myself like f this girl like She's young. She's oh, he has one coming. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> He's my biggest competitor. Yeah. No. It's called Yoff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But anyways, yeah, this town literally is life changing. You said it a second ago that um, that it came easy. Um, it's funny, you know, like when you when you're in in my business and we're you know you sit in a room and everyone's like you know a production company says you know, think of the next hit show. And you're like, oh, well, that is, you yeah. know, and you sit in a room and you do it and you come up with like things and you work so hard and it takes days and all that. But when you come across an idea that works, it just is about as, you know, when it all makes sense, yeah. you can just crank it out in an yeah, hour. It's starts, like a script yeah, people or people exactly. that write books. You know, I think that's, I think that's the truth of, of, um, of creativity that like, you know, you, you struggle when you're trying to create and you figure it out. But when you find the thing that works, yeah. it usually flows very easily as far as a story is concerned yeah. or like what makes sense. And you're like, exactly. okay, because otherwise you'll find the roadblock and you're like, okay, I should stop this. And if you keep going, then you're probably going to fail because it, right. it didn't make sense. You were trying to f- make it make sense yeah, and exactly. it really didn't yeah, completely make sense. Yeah, and that's exactly like how, you know, I was a photographer and I did that and I traveled. I never... It wasn't like lighting my soul on fire. Like I was good at it. Yeah. I made a lot of money. Yeah. But it is just that like I knew there was something else in me, but I just didn't know what. And then when Foy literally fell on my lap, I'm like, I have to do this. Like, I don't know how. I don't know where I'm going to get the money. I literally sold my car to help pay for stuff. I'm like, I have to figure this out. And so that's just... Like you, like you were saying earlier, you have to be scrappy. Like I'm young. I, I don't come from this massive amount of wealth by any means. Like I, it's all me. It's all me carrying this on my shoulders and a winemaker that's making my vision happen, period. And now that, you know, we actually have a physical bottle, we have all these people coming to me like, oh, I want to invest. I want to invest. I'm like, wow. Like it happens so fast and easy, quote unquote. Like, yes, it's hard. And I want to, like, I do work hard. Like, it is hard. But, like, again. And scary. Stars, yeah, it's scary. And there's a risk. There's a risk. I wake up at 4 a.m. I've, um, not canker sores. Yeah, canker sores. When I get stressed, I get canker sores. I have a canker sore, like, once a week. But I couldn't imagine doing anything else. Like, I, I know I'm meant to do this and meant to make it the best I can possibly make it. Well, I'm excited for you. I'm excited too. I think me and you are going to know each other for the rest of my life. 
Um, Damon is literally, I was thinking about this, like Damon, you're like the, the fun uncle, like, and what's that show? It's like, um, everyone loves Raymond. You're like, everyone loves Damon. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm, everyone knows you. I'm a Blake like I'm, I'm, I have conversation. I'm like, oh, do you know Damon? And everyone's like, who doesn't know Damon? Like, <laughs> it's true. It's very true. You know, uh, kind of, it's the, it's the curse of the gift. Yeah, you know I exactly. mean? I, I yeah. really enjoy people and I really like to get to know their stories yeah. and I really, uh, really do like people. Um, yeah. yeah. Big empath too. You are. I, uh, a big, a big, uh, I'm a big fan of your mom. So yeah. One day I'm going to afford her to be able to fix my place up. Um, I've also, got my them. mom's an incredible interior designer. Yes, yeah, so let's get out. let's give some shout outs real quick. So, if you need um, Leanne Stelty, uh, her company's name is White Line Designs. White Line Designs. She is the designer that you want to know in Bentonville. Mm-hmm. So, if you are thinking about redesigning your house right here in Bentonville, you should call her because she's the best. She's if the best. you don't believe it, go check out her little Airbnb right here on um, A Street. Yeah, yeah. Do it. yeah. I. Uh, I got to tell you, you know, you wouldn't be the who you are today without your mom For and sure. without that grandmother of yours. Oh, yeah. I'm also a big fan of her. My grandma is the sweetest person. I mean, I say that. She is feisty. She yeah, but feisty you have very side. feisty women in your family. Oh, yeah. I didn't say there's nothing wrong with that. I have a very feisty mom. So <laughs> um, kudos to you, dude. You for doing everything you're doing. Thank you. Like, I don't know how you're doing it. Um, I don't, I don't know, know what I'm doing either. I mean, I'm just starting but this whole thing. I think that's thing. the beauty of it. Like, no one knows. Like, even people looking at me or watching this podcast, listening to us, like, you might be like, oh, wow, she has it all figured out. I don't. I'm just like, I just believe in myself. That's the difference between me and a lot of people. Like, I'm just like, I think this can be huge how can I get it there and refine it and make it better and make it the best? And that's the only difference. It's like, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm literally 24 years old. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, just so you know, I'm not 24 years old. (laughs) I still don't have it. Still don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But the one thing I do know is that I work hard and I keep waking up and and I show up and like I get, I get kicked in the face and then I get back up and you just get, it's that whole, it's the old story of just like keep working. It will find its way energy exactly um if you keep creating sooner or later somebody will pay attention yeah. and i believe in that and i've always wholeheartedly. been like even since i was little like i've always wanted to wake up and be like happy in what i'm doing and you know have a fulfilled life and i've always been driven to and determined to make that happen and it's funny because um boy like our product is in uh low lofts shout out um, which is a micro micro warehousing space. Yeah, I'll have them on soon. And it's brand new, right? It's they. It's a brand new concept, brand new building, and so it has that like new smell kind of smell. And it's funny because I was telling my mom, I'm like, I don't know what it is, but every time, because like we packaged it out, we had a pre sale for Foy um, to help pay for a lot of stuff, to be honest, and so we had to package out like tons of orders like at the beginning and like it's trickled down but like it was a ton at once and so we were there like packing out my boyfriend and I for like hours and every time we would leave there I would I was like laughing gas central like hysterically laughing like I thought everything was funny and I'm like is it because like it's a new building like uh, paint fumes I don't know so I was telling my mom and she's like probably honestly and then As I went back and forth, I'm like, no, it's just, I love what I'm doing. I'm in a good mood. Like that is, it's not the paint food. Like there's other people in the building. They're not laughing their asses off. Like there's working. I'm like, no, it's, I genuinely love what I'm doing and it's rewarding and seeing people post. I think what's made it the most real is like seeing other people drink foy and like post about it and be like 10 out of 10 review. I'm like, wow, I did that. Like. That is insane, and I'm just so fulfilled by that. And the joy, and again, wine brings people together. They're bringing that to parties. Like, during the Christmas holiday, people are drinking at Christmas. I'm like, they like Foy enough to drink it at Christmas? That is insane to me. Like, how rewarding is that feeling? It's going to be super weird. It's really cool. It's very, very, very cool. Thank you. Well, before you say bye, how do we get it? So uh, all direct-to-consumer to start, 
And so our website is drinkfoy.co, C-O. Um, our Instagram is at drink.foy. Our TikTok is drinkfoy. Um, and yeah, my Instagram's at Caroline Stelty, S-T-E-L-T-E. And yeah, that's where you can get it. Well, Caroline, this was better than expected, and I thought it was going to go well. (laughs) Thank you. So, um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, I appreciate you very much. Thank you, everybody, for joining the Good Time Show. I appreciate you for listening. I appreciate you for watching. Once again, this is Blake Street, the greatest house in the world. Ever. Ever. And once again, Caroline, I'm super proud of you. And um, good luck. And drink foy. (laughs) Drink foy, everybody. Cheers. All right, have a good time. Well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to The Good Time Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.